Hey guys, Nurse Mike here and welcome to SimpleNursing.com. Before we get today's lecture started, please remember to access your free quiz and preview our cool nifty new study guides not here on YouTube. Click the link right up here at any time during this video. All right guys, let's begin. Classic heart failure signs and symptoms, all revolving around low oxygen signs and symptoms from this low cardiac output. So low oxygen in the brain will see syncope as well as mental status changes. Now exams in the NCLEX love to really emphasize that restlessness and agitation is the earliest signs of hypoxia. So guys, write that down. Restlessness and agitation are usually the first signs that indicate low oxygen. But we'll also see in the heart angina and ECG dysrhythmias, or basically a heart block. And for the respiratory tract, we'll see shortness of breath called dyspnea, so you'll see rapid shallow breathing. And now as far as heart failure signs and symptoms, blood fails to pump forward and now starts to back up in the body and or the lungs. So if blood backs up on the left side of the heart, remember L for left means L for lungs. We hear wet crackles inside the lungs known as pulmonary edema. And R for right-sided heart failure, which R means rocks the body with fluid. So we'll see a swollen body with edema, ascites, and even JVD jugular vein distension. Now in this distended heart for dilated cardiomyopathy, we also see regurgitation in the bicuspid and tricuspid valves. Since the valves are loose from this distension, they don't close tight enough. So remember regurgitation means a return of blood into the previous chambers. Fancy words for the blood isn't pumping forward. We're also gonna see narrowed pulse pressure, which is where the blood pressure numbers get closer and closer together. For example, our normal blood pressure is 120 over 80, but it starts getting closer and closer together, turning into 110 over 90. Now this is a very difficult topic for most students to grasp, but guys, please just understand that cardiac output is dropping. And lastly, we'll hear a murmur near the S3 location. And this is from the slamming of blood into the stretched out ventricles, sounding a lot like this. Now as far as diagnostic tests for dilated cardiomyopathy, our chest x-ray is gonna show an enlarged heart called cardiomegaly. So guys, remember a mega heart is cardiomegaly. An echocardiogram, aka just echo, we wanna see the dilated and distended heart. We basically just wanna see how thin those heart muscles are so we know how to evaluate how much blood is being pumped out of the heart, measured in ejection fraction. So ejection fraction of 55% 70% is normal, but guys, dropping below 40% usually indicates that the heart is in some type of heart failure. And lastly, an angiography is used to rule out ischemic heart disease. They basically just inject dye into the veins, which acts like a highlighter to better visualize any blockages of the artery or even poor oxygenated areas. Now, as far as labs, we're gonna see a distended heart with elevated BNP, B-type or brain nitritic peptides, which indicates non-specific stretching or tearing and damage to the heart itself. This is usually an indicator of fluid overload as in heart failure. But in dilated distended cardiomyopathy, this works too since the ventricles are being stretched out and getting super distended and very thin like an overblown balloon. So think of a big balloon that is slowly stretched out under all that pressure. Guys, this is exactly what's happening to our ventricles. We measure our BNP, which means that anything over 100 is not good. So over 300 is mild, over 600 is moderate. Thanks for watching. For our full video and new quiz bank, click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. All right, guys, see you next time.